and uh-huh. we don't and sorry if we are using android 11 and we don't have an emulator for that suppose does it matter does, does it make the difference we can we can run it on a real device if you have a real device with android 11 no issue you can go far all you need to do is like for example when you are going to configure your uh, uh, virtual device okay we are android is okay. providing us with the sdk software development kit for example when you are going to build a new machine okay so mm. when you are going mm. to build a new machine you are going to download so much stuff from the internet that's why i said uh, android studio is a resource hungry program when i say i want to create a virtual device which will run on android 10 then it means okay. i'm going to download the api for uh, android 10 which will be approximately of size 4 gb okay okay so, so you are taking care of what kind of device you are targeting no doubt they are backward compatible they are backward compatible if i divide, build a solution today it will run on android 9 android 8 android 7 no issues because while starting my application development i have set one attribute that is min sdk minimum sdk that i set is for example jelly bean it means any device but mean jelly bean to android 11 it will work upon no issue android is and sir so what what about the messages which are coming from the android uh, partners that no more support for jelly bean no more support for froyo what does actually what is meant by by these terms what is, is the really, actual meaning of this what happens what happens over the period of time what these uh, companies are doing they are deprecating the old devices okay even the support for okay. these devices even uh, as i said when i started building mobile application development in say 2014 at that time minimum sdk requirement was uh, api say 5 now it is minimum okay. api is 17 17 which is jelly bean uh, if i still remember the moment we got the samsung phones if you remember they were having jelly beans like it it is a way back a 6 7 year way back okay nowadays nobody is using those 500 12 mb ram phones or 1 gb ram phones mm. true very so, true those, very true sir. those devices are out of the market now so that's why the android is saying that they are no more supporting these devices so that's why minimum okay. sdk has gone up to jelly bean even with jelly bean they think that they are catering up to 99.8 Two uh, percent of the devices. They are not bothering about zero point eight percent of Android devices. Android devices. And sir, uh, la- at the last, you please continue with the practical aspects that you are going to have. And at the last, I would just ask that if you can share how our uh, applications can be put on Google uh, Play uh, Play uh, Store. That would be much, Bhanji. Uh, Play Store. Hmm. That would be very helpful yeah. to all these students who have joined us. definitely sir definitely with the time loss will yeah. uh, thank you jeep sir i have one question yes ma'am uh, sir what actually happens during the sleep mode jab hum log on karte hain android mein what actually happens in that particular mode sleep mode ke jab baat karte hain sleep mode basically you see things are in in the pause mode basically nothing else your your application is running inside that's why we say an applicate uh, activity life cycle see for example it's just like uh, you 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 just put uh, you can say uh, some uh, finger in your ear you start stop listening it doesn't make you die so just just like an application application is having a life cycle it's going through various phases it's creating it's get paused it's uh, resuming it's again stop it's again restarts just like it goes through various life cycles so similarly when we but still we alarms can run na Pardon? Still alarms can run. Do, yeah. Uh, alarms can run. Do yes. Sleep Nowadays, an Android system is providing you with the, so much options. Like uh, uh, with Android 12, you can Android 11, you can customize so many things. So uh, over the period of time, what Android is doing, it is providing more and more power to the user. It's letting the user to customize so many things. okay that's mm-hmm. that's the beauty of the modern o- operating systems or modern variants of android rather i say okay. thank you so much sir yeah. thank you so should we start uh, okay so uh, yeah let me share the screen first of all yeah i suppose you can see my screen my voice is quite audible to you all 
Okay. So what is yes, the follow? This is session two. Yes, In the session two, we are purely dedicated to the practical aspects. No doubt at this this stage, I can't directly jump to these professional applications like WhatsApp, Facebook. That's definitely is the task that is done by a team of uh, uh, Android developers who are at uh, the level three, if I say. A level three means their code obviously is very complex. So when we think about uh, man-machine interaction, so that means basically if you want machine to be intelligent, the more code to be written by the humans. So similar is the case, for example, if we are building an app which is more user friendly, it means a more coding is done on the from the developer side for it. Okay, so that coding definitely you come to know with the passage of time, the more and more you are converted with the programming environment. Okay, so uh, yeah, let me share the screen first, uh, like, uh, yeah. So I had one thing uh, with the, you to share with you people. I was just uh, going through this slide today, uh, even, okay, so, This is an SDLC for an application, for a mobile application. It's just like a normal software we uh, go with. So initially we build a strategy and we have analysis and planning. You have UI and UX planning, US design. Nowadays we talk about two concepts. One is user interface and another is user experience. UX is uh, equally very important. If you have a better UI and better UX, then obviously the people with go for your app if your UX is poor, means user experience is poor, definitely the people will uh, uninstall your app and they will not be going with ahead with your application. So then when you are going to app development, again, as a question, whether I should go for Android or iOS. For iOS, we have a language named as Swift. We have Xcode, which is an ID for application development for iPhones. If you go back with the Android Studio, which is the larger segment of the development or user community with the mobiles. If I go with that, then definitely I have an Android studio, which is one of the best ID available from the Google for mobile application development. So I will definitely be using the U, developing the UI for the same. Nowadays we have very better UI components. Like we have the concept of material design. This material design is providing wonderful components which you uh, feel uh, when you interact with the application. Then definitely we have a testing and finally deployment and support to the user. This is just an SDLC, which I would like to share with you people. I was interested in like, it, it was just a basic a concept like, uh, like any software mobile application is also a software and it also goes through uh, a life cycle, right? So, this is my screen. So as uh, you can see, I have installed Android Studio. I have uh, shared with you how to install the Android Studio. At this stage, I'm assuming that you have gone to Google, you typed Google and download Android Studio, and then you have downloaded the installer of 900 something MB, and then you have clicked the next, 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 and you are done with the installation part. So once you are done with the installation part, now it's time to move to the practical section. Here I click on start. I see the list of uh, softwares installed, obviously the program list. And here I have an Android studio. So nowadays we have these studio word very common for building mobile applications. We have Android studio for developing something in the say in the R language or uh, in Python. We may be having something like called uh, uh, R studio. Maybe like, for example, uh, here, I don't know, I do I have, yeah. For example, R Studio. say, see here, this is an R Studio which used to build solutions in the programming language R or Python, like so. So we have these IDs available. One, going for Android, we have an Android Studio. I click here and this one is saying Android Studio. I click over the Android Studio and it opens up with the Android Studio ID. It's the same screen that I have shared with you people. Okay, so this is the first screen that appears the moment you start with an Android app. So the first one is a dialog box or definitely if, if you have some projector you are working with, definitely that project window will open. 
but if you have closed all the projects and then you restart with the android studio you are up with this window which says you can create a new project you can open an existing project or you can do a number of other uh, tasks which are given in this list i have downloaded the latest version of android studio that is android studio 4.2.1 it is latest today tomorrow maybe we are having android 5.1 as well so we are going with the first choice first of all i will create hello world in 2 to 5 minutes only i'm just giving you an idea what whether things are working perfectly fine or not okay so i will go with the android creating new project okay and going with the empty activity click with the next and then we are going to give the name of the application by default it is my app if i say now it is m s d c h w a w p m s d c hello world app okay you see i have given the name to the project as just like app this is the name and the project name automatically comes in the small case and here is com dot example is the default otherwise i may use my company name for example com dot mathalu dot like this i can go with the this location where i am going to save my projects i am keeping with the defaults and here we use select the language it's preferring either kotlin or java okay i am going with the default java although you can opt for the kotlin as well if you are a kotlin developer no problem and here is the solution what aman sir was asking about like whether it will work with the backward with the other devices like when i start building a, 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 a an app i'm looking for the minimum minimum device for example if i go with the, this api 16 it means i'm catering 99.8% of the android device users for example if i set this to be for example to android 9 okay so if i am setting to android 9 pi it means approximately i am catering 39.5% of the android community only so this is what you have to take in consideration that what is the minimum api level that how much backward compatibility your app should be if i i want my backward compatibility to be anything above 9 there may be some features which are not available with the old versions so maybe like for example uh, you might get a message from whatsapp that this whatsapp will not work on this operating system variant you need to upgrade your operating system to work with whatsapp these kind of notifications start sending when you you are going to use new features which are not available with the old variants that that's another possibility okay so you have to take into consideration what we will cater to the maximum possible audience that's this one that's android no 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 not this one i will go with the android 16 for example 16 or 71 it's choice to as yours i will go with this this is 99.8% i will click with the finish so the moment i click with finish it will start doing so many things and what those so many things are there if you look at the bottom section of the app i'm moving it bit this side so that you are able to see the screen see on the bottom side we have scanning files to index we have something like gradle building so many things are happening in the background and it may be bit slower in case you have a laptop with the 2 gb ram or 4 gb ram okay the more ram you have the better ssd you have accordingly the speed of uh, this will be okay so that's why i say this is a resource hungry program it keeps on sometimes it keeps on downloading so many things from the internet as well for the first time you create the project it takes time but the moment you make any changes to the project it becomes a bit faster so it's building this okay so if you look at this it it is gradle build gradle project sync in progress now you might be wondering what this gradle is nowadays we are having the build tools the build tools these build tools help us in building applications these build tools are available like for java for android for react these build tools are available for eclipse as well okay so if you are 
building an app, we have A and T and we have Maven. Maven is another build system and the Gradle is the third. And in Android, we use the Gradle as a build system. This Gradle build system is building and taking the entire responsibility of the dependencies your project is uh, concerned with. Okay, for example, whether you are going for Android API 28 level, or whether you want to minimum, you want to increase your minimum SDK level, whether you want to download or uh, you can say use any third party uh, applications, third party libraries, all these dependencies are handled by this build system, which is named as Gradle. The latest version of Gradle is 7.2, which is in the development stage. We have updated automatically. It keeps on uh, informing you that Gradle update is available. That's why I say it keeps on downloading the latest one update is 4.2.2. So we're going with that default Gradle version here. So if you look at the code, the moment I'm going with the boilerplate, when I say boilerplate code, it means the code which is provided as such automatically by, by, by the system to us. Okay, so I, if I see here, if I try to understand the basics of uh, Java here, what this program has done here, it has it created a package which is com dot example dot this. It has created some imported some packages here. One such package is Android X dot app compared dot app this, and another one is this. So it by why this is there because it is using one class app compared activity here and another one class bundle here, okay? So what this bundle is, bundle is basically bundle of resources, bundle of resources, your application need. So whenever an application needs any resources, it keeps on putting into a bundle. Reason being, reason being is because when you continue with the, the application, for example, you switch from one application to another, the process, the app still resumes from the same state. It is storing the state, previous state of uh, the process in the of the app in the bundle. Okay, so here we have main activity underscore main dot XML. This is again the layout, the UI we were talking about. This is a user interface. Okay, so let me explain in brief about this plate. This is consisting of the different components like text, all these stuff which I had shown you. That if you want, like for example, if you want to enter uh otp you know the restriction of otp you will be allowing only the six digits otp to be there or you want four digit otp to be there and you want otp to be text only to be numeric only okay so accordingly you can customize your layout okay so the moment you are creating a layout you are taking into consideration number of things okay whether it's a plain text whether it is a password whether you want to show that password, the correct letter you type, or you do not want to show that. Again, it's your choice. Whether you want phone number only, whether you want a date of birth only, or whether you want a time only, so many different options are available. So Android is providing you with a list of such controls, which you can simply drag and drop in order to create your UI. Okay, so now, I have this layout, which is the default layout here. Okay. Now I'm first of all, I would run this app and then I will go ahead with the second app. So the first one, hello world app. So the layout by default created here, this is the hello world. Okay. Showing here. Now I want to run this in order to run this. I need, I have a two options. Okay. The first option is I will go for Android virtual device. Second option is I will go for the real device. As I said, suppose there is a 16 GB RAM on my device. I can take a chance to configure AVD, Android virtual device on my, on my laptop. But if I have 4 GB RAM, then I may think of using the real device. Okay. If I'm thinking of the real device, definitely then I, there is no need for AVD or emulator. So if I click here on the AVD manager, the moment I click on the AVD manager, it will give me the list of devices which are connected here. Okay. So see here, I have already configured a virtual device. I'm not going to take a chance of configuring a new virtual device. Reason being, 
because if as i said what happens if you configure a device for example i have configured it for api 29 but if i start for configuring it for api 30 which is android 11 it will start downloading 5 gb data from the internet that's really you can say sometimes in the live sessions we can't go far okay because we have to wait for that time so i am going with the configuration which i have made already i have configured a device which is named as pixel 3a okay which is based on api 29 which is having this resolution okay and based on api 29 and uh, some this is or uh, android 10 okay at c c here it's taking more than 9.7 gb here space this sdk has consumed approximately 10 gb of space so you must have enough space available on your device if you are working with android okay so no compromise on c drive you must have c drive at least 100 gb free okay so we'll go with the display button which is basically launching the avi avd the moment i click over here you see avd which is android virtual device it means i have configured a virtual device and i'm making it on it's just like you have got a new phone okay and you are opening it for the first time okay so if you have a phone and you are opening it for the first time it is something look uh, like this okay so you have this back button because i have already configured i was already running a number of applications here so that's why those applications are appearing here okay uh, it is just like uh, using the normal phone okay all i need to do is like if i go with scrolling towards left towards left i have to clear all these running applications so i have no application now i'm running i have the same device which is very similar to the one which you purchase as a new device whatever some applications some apps are pre installed like this we have google chrome and we have with this clock so many devices are pre installed on this okay so some i may install i can configure this device just like purchasing a new phone okay i have purchased a new phone which is virtual purchase i have virtually configured a mobile phone and now i can virtually register it like for example i can configure it for my google account i can configure it for for my one of my email accounts google accounts okay again this is my choice okay so if i want if i want i can but in this case i just have this emulator running emulator up and running okay now what i want is now i want to run this application okay which i have just created this is a hello world application so for that i what i will do is i will look for the run option run app this is the first option second one is shift plus f10 third one is i will go with the, this control bar and this is the button run app so any choice you can go for if i go with the, clicking this button what it will do see at the bottom it's saying gradle build running so it means gradle is building which is a build tool is building your apk it is building your application package and once this application package is built it will install that apk on your virtual device and you will be able to see the output so it may take time as i said again the better device the more the better device you have the better experience you will be having in a mobile application development okay so now i have to wait for this gradle build to uh, complete the building part and it will install this it's saying see here it is installing and then after install it will launch so it has launched the activity and you can see here i am making it a bit zoom okay so if i zoom this screen here okay you can see this one is basically showing us the hello world okay so this hello world text is appearing and on the top we have application name msdc hw app okay so if i do not want this msdc hw app 
something else i want a message of customized message where i can customize this message there are number of options we will go for this the more you explore about android the more you will be able to make uh, the customizations okay so if i go with the one option as i said we can create a resources res folder is one folder which is going to contain the resources and these resources are number one drawable this drawable component will be holding your images for example you want to use some images in your app you will be putting all those images in the drawable folder if you want to create the different layouts all those layouts will be contained in the layout section we have one layout that is a main activity underscore main dot xml and remember we create layouts with xml files only in html file we used to create dynamic components like using div component of html so here we are going to create with xml so remember we are using xml to create components and create layouts in android fine so we have mip map mip map is another folder which is going to hold the uh, you know your uh, app icon the moment you install an app on this mobile device you will see an icon which is your um, app icon that uh, this is a whatsapp you will see accordingly the symbol so by default it is an android symbol which is shown here but you can customize it according to your brand or your company name or okay depending on what kind of company you are running okay so accordingly you can customize your icon as well and then that is your icon which is a launcher icon or we can have a rounded icon that's available here and in the last we have values folder here this is going to contain the values for some fixed variables for example we can customize some colors so i have customized these colors like purple which is going to contain this rgb pattern okay so we can customize we can create our own colors for example here i press angle bracket automatically it gives us this id intelligent id it's based on intellij idea okay it gives you the option the right option there is no chance of going wrong okay so that's the beauty of this so if i am going to use a color for example i am going to create a color automatically it gives you a choice which color you want i want say my red this is just a color which you have given that i am going to create a color which is my underscore red this is user defined color okay and if this is user defined color i will go with ending this okay so sorry 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 i have to end with the color not this wait control g i will close this up and up it will create end of the color within this within these two tags start of color and end of color is the value of the color okay so you may be using rgb pattern here okay say hash red ff g 00 b blue 00 you may be giving some other parameters okay again the choice yours and it will create a color red for you see on the left hand side it's showing that it has created a color red here okay i can use this color to uh, give it a, a, a coloring to the font to any you can say to any text okay again so i see yours you can use it anywhere so this is color.xml a resource again color is a resource okay again string strings.xml again string resources named resources and this is one of the important resource file and it is very useful especially we when we say android devices are language independent you want to build an app and then if you want to switch the interface from english to hindi or from hindi to punjabi this file is going to be very useful remember so now here we have some predefined one string variable that is app underscore name which is name of the app which is showing the default message here and if i customize here this one which is message i customize it for example just wanna 
say something. This is anything which you want. Okay. All you need to do is click on Control S to save. And here you might have seen earlier it was showing play button, which is to run the app. But now it is showing something different. It says some modifications are, have been made with the latest this Android uh, Studio variant. Now you have instant uh, run application option available. Okay, you can dynamically change the content of the code and see the reflect the changes same. For example, if I see here, this second option, it says apply changes and rerun the application. I click over here. The moment I click over here, I just see, wait for a couple of seconds. Remember, these couple of seconds can be minutes as well if your device is slow. Okay, so I'm waiting for it. It says apply changes and there is an error. Error. The error is, you have to reinstall and restart the app. Okay, resource changed. Okay, you have added a new resource. It says you have added a new resource. You have to restart the app. You have to relaunch. I am going to terminate the old version and I will install the updated one because we have added a new resource. So now accordingly, you have to say, see here, just wanna say, because you have added the resources and the resource was color. See here in the color.xml, we had added a resource. So definitely when we are going to add a, add a resource, we need to rerun the entire app, okay? So when you are not uh, going to change, make changes in the code only, then there is no need to rerun the app. You simply update the, apply the changes only, okay? So here we had added the resource. So obviously maybe the case that that resource is used somewhere. So in order to update the resource availability, you have to, use the first option that is a run app again okay so we have made the changes so we are done with the hello world app this is the first task that we are supposed to next one now for example i want to create a ui create a user interface and that user interface is creating a login form for example Okay, let me create a login form for you. I will go with the same activity. Okay, I, I will not be creating too many activities. All, all we can do is simply right click new and here you can go for activity. There is an activity. This is the first option activity. I'll go with empty activity. Okay, an empty activity is created. By default, it is main activity two. Okay, I want to create second activity, for example, second activity. Okay, this is my second activity. See, when you are going to create a new activity, you are opting for the activity name first, and then by default, there is a checkbox, generate a layout file. Okay, so it means whether you want to create an activity which is going to be a background service. Maybe, for example, you can create an Android, an activity which is just having no UI. But we recommend an activity to have UI, but we can create some services which are not requiring any UI. Okay. So what if we need UI, then definitely we click over here, we'll go with the default and it will create a layout file as well, which is named as, for example, if you say second activity here, it will create a layout automatically named as activity underscore second. If I create a main activity here, the activity layout name will be activity underscore second. This is the default configuration done by the Android Studio. Okay, we'll go with the defaults, language Java and package name same. We'll click on finish. The moment we click on finish, it's again building the Gradle. Okay, going with the things. Again, it's in the sync process. Now second activity is created, but what about the code? Where to customize, where to configure the interface and everything, okay? So now we have a number of challenges. The first challenge is, let me stop this because now we want to stop this, okay? 
So this application is stopped. I'm going to close this emulator because I just want to make the screen big and visible to you all. Okay. So you have created an empty activity. Now let's understand some of the basics that how we can create a UI. Okay. So by default, if you see here is we have code, we have split we have design. Okay. So when we say split, we can see both code and as well as design. You see here on the right hand side, we have a design. It means how the, inter, uh, the screen, the activity is going to look alike. If I want to maximize it, I can do it. If I want to minimize it, I can accordingly do it. Okay. I have this one. This is an interface. I can create the interface using XML. I can create the interface using drag and drop. Again, the choice is mine. How I want to go for it. Okay. So if I want to go for the layout, we will having the different set of layouts. For example, if I go with the design part, okay, I have the different type of layouts. Let me click on the layouts. I'm giving with the constraint layout, linear layout, linear layout, horizontal linear layout, vertical. So many different options are there. So I will go with the linear layout vertical first. Constraint layout, no doubt, this layout is default layout nowadays with the Android. But I will definitely recommend for the beginners not to go with the constraint layout and the first go. Okay, you can go with the constraint layout, but at the later stage. Once you are done with, you are know how to use linear layout. So let's start with the basic layout that is the linear layout. I will open the code section here. Okay. Here, see for doing same thing, I have a number of any number of ways in Android Studio. I can simply click here L capital. Automatically, it will start showing me the options. I will go with the second that is the linear layout. So the linear layout is there. So I have configured the linear layout. Then I will enter here. I'm going to design the UI with XML. Okay. If you are you seeing it for the first time, don't worry. The Android Studio is there to help you out. Okay. So it means we have created a container which is going to contain the components in the linear fashion. In the linear fashion, it can contain the components in two ways. Either it can contain in the horizontal fashion or in the vertical fashion. So for that, I will create one option that is called orientation. So we are going to create a layout. When you are going to create a layout, you have two options. Like in other words, if I say it's a either landscape or portrait in MS Word. But in case of Android Studio, it is either horizontal or vertical. Either I want to arrange my components in the horizontal fashion or in the vertical fashion, depending on your choice. So we want to go for the vertical option. So all you need to do is you simply have to select the option among the options. No worries, no need to write any code or you simply go with the, the options given by the ID for you. Now, for example, here, we are going to create a login form. When I think of login form, what should be there? At the top, you're looking for something called label, which is a text view here. Then you want uh, two text boxes, edit boxes here which you want to enter your login here, enter your password here, then you finally want the submit button or login button. Let's do it with XML. We are going to create a text view. For the text view, Android provides us with a control named as text view. We'll select the text view. By default, it gives you the choice to select for the width of the control. We want the width to be same as that of the parent, match parent. Match parent says, if the window size is four inch, it should be four inch. If window size is three inch, three inch. According to the size of the app, according to the size of the device, it will expand its size accordingly. Second option is wrap content. For layout height, I will go with the wrap content. Okay, wrap content means depending on the font size. If the font size is 20 dp, 
accordingly the content the width of the the height of the control will be if the font is small in size accordingly the width will be so we'll be determining the width of the control according to the content size then i can click slash here it will end up this but i want more to be explained on this so when i am going to create a text view so two things i have mentioned two properties to attribute some people say attribute some people say properties doesn't matter basically these are the attributes for these controls we are going to create a text view width is given height is given now we need to give it an id simply type an id it will you have select android colon id why why this is android colon id nowadays we are having the packages different packages in case of java we have something starting with java dot lang dot this in case of android we have something starting with android dot something like that. so android colon id it means some package android named android is already there okay so i'm going with the id i will select to the first option now i am going to give it a name how to manage the country again components okay if it is a text view recommended is small case tv that says text view. what kind of text view is it is a title you give it a name like title okay again this is user choice i want to handle my code in a way that when i am in the stage when i have hundreds of controls i must be able to differentiate it okay because if you do not uh, different you are not, not able to differentiate your tokens of the program you end up with an application which is misleading remember so either work hard in the beginning or repent later choice is yours okay so i have created an id which is a text view title it means this is a text view id title here i am going to say something what i am going to write here is text what text i want to show there say login form login form whatever okay so the moment i see this i i can look at in the split window see on the right hand side you may be able to see the moment i type in login form here i am able to see this is something which is shown here so if you see this you might have noticed this login form is aligned to the left i want it put in align in the center i want to put margins everything a web developer can understand this scenario how we are going to create a ui how we are going to configure a ui of an activity so this is nothing but a page okay so if i want to put it in the center the android provides us with a property name as gravity okay so i will use the gravity to have center the moment i put gravity center i see here that login is put in the okay so now i will go with the next option okay i will copy paste the code don't worry i am not uh, wasting too much time here i just want a, a similar type of code to be copied but new code need to be created for example if i am creating added text where i can enter the text just like entering your username your password so i want again width to be match parent these are something which are very common very repetitive that's why it is only for the first time you feel this is something new what later on when you repeatedly exercise the same uh, set of code you feel that it is quite easy id again i am going with the default this is added text it is username i am saying user name okay give always give your control a meaningful name so that at the later stages you can easily differentiate it the moment we create placeholder in html the same kind of hint can be generated here we have a concept of hint here so give a hint to the user what he wants to enter enter username here we are giving him a message that you and need to enter a username here okay so you can end up this control by typing slash simply this is a singleton you can say this is not a paired tag okay no need to put create a pair tag for a date text so what else we want we have created an id we have created a hint
now see for example i want to create uh, 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 for example uh, make it bold or something like that i can have so many uh, available options like for example i can use text color text style text alignment so many options are there you can try it out of your own i am not wasting time here i will go with the simple one here okay so you can try it out all you need to do is if you want to see property related to text simply type in text and id android id android studio is there to help you out so developing is quite easy no worries all you need to know that you need to have a basic idea that what i am looking for once you know what i am looking for accordingly the android is going to help you out at least if you are going to a shop you get want something you give an idea i want this much i want a bulb i want this then he will show what kind of bulb they have and accordingly choose a bulb it's an orient it's a crompton like so so similarly for developing a code you must have an idea i want to create an edit text i want to create a text color i will be text color so you must give some something similar to that it is and it's going to help you out accordingly so see and what kind of text it is going to have what kind of input type should be i i think input type okay i say inp accordingly there is an option see for example here input type so if i go with this input type option it will give me list that you can create a text you can create a text password date date time so many options are there for example username this username what do you want this username to be if it is an email email which is your user id then i will go with the email option that is also there you can scroll this down okay it's there so you can go with the text email subject like this email address see here this is an option option for this okay so if you want to go for say for example for the for any reason you forget you you are not showing any option there then there is an option simply type in control plus space war the moment you control press control plus space war there are certain shortcuts which are available which you learn over the period of time the moment you start using this the control plus space war again enable the this list of options for you okay for example for any reason if you forget that now what what are the options available i need to type in no no nobody is going to help you out in that case you will go for the choices okay and i am going here with the text this is a text type okay so this is the first one now i am going to copy paste it i am going to create another control of the similar type now i will not be wasting time in typing i will simply copy and paste now what changes i need to make number 1 the first change is i have a new control so new name it should be name should be password okay so the name should be like for example this is et password p a w s w o r d password and here we are going to give the hint to the user not username rather this time i want the user to have password enter password okay so input type text no it is something else what is that that is text password we want the user to enter the password which is consist of numbers and letters if you want a number only then you can use number numeric password as well there are options there are a number of options you can go for one more thing we require here what is that that is the login button because the moment you enter the information you have to click on the button login button so how to create that again android provides us with the option name control name that button you click here again length of the width of the this i am going with the match parent and i am going with the wrap content again what else i need is for every id remember it is recommended that for every ui component you must associate with an id otherwise you see those uh, uh, you can say irritating message app crashed app crashed so if you want to get rid of that those messages that have crashed you must have an id for your ui okay the more control you have your ui the better it will be and you will be getting the least app crashed messages okay so i am going with id this id is basically because this is a button i will go with the prefix bt okay that is a login this is i am creating ui okay so once i am done with this now i want some message to be put in here in the button what it is okay i have to give it a text text that text is login 
ना दिस इज द बटन वेयर यू वॉन्ट लॉग इन मैसेज टू बी शीन सो दिस इज दिस सो नाउ इफ यू सी ऑन द राइट हैंड साइड इट इज ऑलमोस्ट शोइंग अस द लुक्स ऑफ द फॉर्म हाउ इट विल लुक लाइक सी फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस इज अ डिफॉल्ट लीनियर ले आउट वर्टिकल अलाइनमेंट आई वॉन्ट समथिंग टू बी देयर from the board top i want this one to be bold and some margin to be there on the top for that what i will do is i will think of this now i have this login form i want some margin to be there okay i will simply click over here i will say margin m a r and obviously margin margin what which kind of margin top margin how much margin you want to give for example if i say 50 what again it is going to give me unit in in this android application you have two kind of unit one is sp and another is dp remember dp is a device independent pixel and sp is a screen pixel okay so we for font names we will go for sp for normal variants we will go for dp so this is a this is 2050 dp okay you see the margin from the top here is okay accordingly you can introduce uh, uh, paddings uh, margins uh, these are uh, the basic properties i think anyone can go with okay so this form is there but now see this you can see this view this is view oh sorry i want to make it bold as well you know so make it bold that is properties text style the moment you click on text style it will give you option bold italic or normal i want to give the bold okay and if i want to increase the size of the text i have another property text size okay text size text size how much text size as i said when i'm going to this 20 now this time i am going for sp 20 sp like this okay i can increase it to any size like it can be 30 dsp but that doesn't look nice but still for for the context to of understanding i can go for this so this is how it will look like when you appear it on the screen if you want to insert the image here you can insert the image here as well okay i i will give you an idea again how to insert the image here suppose you want to insert image before after login whatever say for example after text view you want to insert the image then you simply need to go for image view so we have an image view here image view what kind of image you want to insert into for example you want width to be match parent and uh, then height to be wrap content okay according to the image i can specify the coordinates here values here in terms of dp as well okay so again giving an id that seems to be like uh, uh, you can say bit slow at this stage because see for example creating a ui is one of the time consuming job okay so uh, if you agree with me these css builder spends hours night night long hours to build a ui again it is a, a designer job is really time consuming okay so you can create better design better options are there you can uh, use number of properties if i see with the professional controls if i see i if i use 10 attributes here they might have set hundreds of attributes here okay so you accordingly you go ahead with the the properties so this is my image image view this is suppose a user whatever okay so i am going this okay and then i am going to end this up okay i want to put some image src so we have a image source which image i want to show for example let it be uh, i can go for any image okay you can see from the list of images if they are available here okay this is a color i want to go with the any specific to android colon so this is again color okay drawable okay so here is a frame again there is a lot of options you can go for again the choice is yours which image you want to go for you can choose any image from the drawable if you don't have any okay then you can choose from 
uh, file of your choice. Again, this is choice, the choice yours. I can leave it. Okay. So now, suppose this form is there. Now I want to run this app. Let it me click on this run. It will start the emulator. Will it show us this? See, it's Gradle build is running. It is connecting to the emulator. The moment you see the emulator, okay, it's installing. See, the installation is happening. And you see here the first screen only. What is the reason why I'm not able to see this? Because in the configuration, I have built a second page. Just think of a, a, a web application. You created one page, which is your main page. You created another page. Okay, I have created two page, but I have not established any communication between them. In HTML, we use the concept of hyperlinks to link from one page to another. But in case of Android, what we will do, how we will enable the communication between two activities. These two activities want to communicate with one another. For example, I click on first activity, username, password, click on log button. I go to the next activity and it gives me the information. Welcome Daljeet, for example. Okay, man means Daljeet is coming from where? From the first page. I'm getting some data from the first page as well. Okay, so here comes the concept of intents. In Android, we have the concept of intent. So now we are going to use the intent here in order to make the communication, make the navigation from one activity to another or to make the communication between the two activities as such. Okay, so if I want to communicate with the two activities, what can be done is, for example, I want to create one button here. On the click of the button, I want to start with the next activity. So how I can do this? For example, I simply go with the first activity, which is my activity underscore main. Here you have one button. I'm going to change the layout from say linear layout. I want to constraint layout to be converted into a linear layout. First of all, to make the thing simple. Okay. Then I will change the orientation here orientation i will do it in a hurry okay because i know i've explained it already to you okay so 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 this is my uh, layout i'm going to make the screen a bit bigger by making use of this i'm going to delete this properties so hello world appears here i i, I may i may put a gravity here to put this hello world in the mid that again we have done already gravity to center so it shows if it is not showing what is the reason for this we have an alternate option for this we have layout gravity as well so if i go with gravity we have a layout gravity in some cases in text view cases we can go for this and it will put out the control specific control into the center okay so now I'm going to create a button here, which will lead me to, to, to the second activity. Okay. So I am going to create a button. Okay. And this button, I, I will again be a bit faster. So please, sorry, uh, Marie, I'm, again, I'm not going to say this is my ID. I'm going to give an ID and that ID is BT go. Let it be go. If this is an ID, remember, I'm going to make use of this later. Okay. So text. I want text is already, sorry, not text size. This is text, text. Go to second activity, any message which I want to show. Go to second, okay. And uh, done with this part. I will stop it here. Say, now I am able to see hello world. I'm not going to customize it. Remember, because when are you going to customize, so much time is taken, so we are, limited where we have a limited time okay just want to get to give you an idea this is a beginner session where we get an idea how the things are working how minutely you observe the things that matters okay 
So once you are able to uh, the core idea for this MSDC is just to give an idea, to give an handy knowledge that you are ready with the things and you can go ahead with this. You can sharpen your skills by browsing more on the internet for the same, by asking more from me in the uh, coming days, okay? That's again the choice of yours. The more you work upon the same, the more you have the questions and accordingly you will be asking, okay? So I'm going to activity underscore main dot XML. Yeah, sorry, main activity. This is the main activity. Now see, we create an association. Now see, XML is creating a layout and Java is driving that layout. What do you mean by driving the layout? It means that UI is unable to do something. UI has no power. Similar, without HTML, without JavaScript, HTML has no power. JavaScript is giving you the power, the action. Similarly, in Android, XML is just creating a layout. You want that layout to be powerful and that power comes from the language, either Java or Kotlin, okay? So when I say API, API level 29, 28, it means they are providing us with some set of classes and interfaces which are making it work. So here I have a button. So now I am going to create a button class here, okay? So here's a button class and uh, for the button, I'm creating object. Say for example, this is BT go. I'm creating this BT go, which is uh, an object for button. So obviously this, this is not an object creation as such. I'm creating just a reference to this reference, which is BT go. I want this to be initialized to binded to the UI, to the XML for that Java provides us, Android provides us with a method name as find view ID. This is called of mapping between Java and XML. Okay. So we want this BT go object to be mapped with BT OK layout. Means this layout is now able programmed in the Java. Okay. So here R dot ID dot BT go. Maybe in the first time you feel, sir, what you are going, I'm not getting it. But see, remember, once you go see this video later on, I will be sharing the recordings with you people. When you see this video repeatedly, one or two times, you will see uh, uh, there is something. This is like association, communication between the Java and XML. Okay, so now this is the same like HTML and JavaScript they are connecting. Okay, so similarly, here is the communication. Now, button is initialized, BT go which is my, say I I am I'm using this capital B G O capital so that you're not confusing it with the, this BT go. Okay. So this is BT go with capital, this BT G O capital, this is an object. And this BT go is basically a, a ID for the XML component there. Okay. Now I want, what I want is BT go dot. Now I want event handling, some event handling, but event handling, I want to, register for clicking for that java provides us with set on click listener remember okay so we are going to set on click listener so the moment we do this automatically it is creating a code for us that when you are going to register your button for clicking the moment you click on here what do you want what do you want here okay i want an intent to be created here this intent, this is an intent. So we are going to create an intent here and named it as an intent. I want to create an intent, which is new intent. This is just creating an object in Java. This is quite easy. Okay, what you want to be here, this, this contains two parameters. One is, for example, I want to create an intent. Okay, this content refers to this and where you want to go, that is, second activity dot class. I want to go to this activity. Okay. This is what I am getting here. Oh, I'm getting error. What is the reason for this? Cannot resolve constructor now. Okay. So this is uh, get, get application context. We can get it this way out. You have number of options. I can get it through 
application context, no queries. Okay, so we are going to start the activity. Start activity. Okay, we are going to start activity and we are passing the intent. Intent is I N intent. What are the purpose here is the moment I click this button BT go, it will create an intent which wants you have to move from current. This is current. This is the second activity. You want to go from first activity to the second activity. This is just like an hyperlink here. So I want to go from one activity to another and then you start with the intent. Means first of all, we are informing it that do this and then we say do now. Okay. So now when I save it and run it again, I'm giving the option for opening the emulator here. Okay, this is the old one. I want to terminate the old one. No problem. I, I want new one to be there. Yeah. See, see, this is a hello world. And I click on this button. The moment I click on this button, I'm done with the second activity. So what do you learn here? The idea is that when you want to create a kind of hyperlink, you want to move from one activity to another, there is a communication link. And this communication link is, is created through intent. Okay. So we create an intent instance. We given the intent, we give an idea. What do we want? We are creating an explicit intent here. And the explicit intent says, I want to go from one activity to another. Okay, so when you want to go up from one activity to another, you simply use this constructor intent get application context from a second activity name and start the activity. So many things are there. We, we, we can talk about that in the coming sessions. No worries. We are already uh, running with the time. Okay, so again, uh, going ahead with the is your choice. Like I can bind up the session here. I will be uh, welcoming the questions now because I have a lot to show. I, I was interested in showing the Moodle app. I was interested in showing the, uh, the email app. So many things were there in the queue, but uh, I, I feel that uh, it's uh, time for the lunch break as well. So, so it's a time for questions now. Please question answer will come. Daljeet sir, is Kotlin and Java on the same platforms? If you know Java, can you work on Kotlin? Yeah, basically this Kotlin is based on Java. See what happens. There is a again at the industry level we have a kind of you can say, politics. What the politics or uh, at industry level is? For example, when this uh, Java was the product of Sun Microsystem, okay, it was purely open source, free, purely free, like so. When it acquired by Oracle in 2010, then Oracle basically worked with this. See, Google is a rival for Oracle. Okay, so it is using the again the product of Oracle. So maybe that they feel that uh, I need to pay something. Obviously, uh, the companies are not selling everything freely, free of cost. Okay, so they were looking for they need to develop their own language. So what they did is they they came up with the the an alternate that is again based on Java. They created their own. They have a team of developers, or they come up with the Kotlin. And now officially, obviously, Oracle also have started uh, like uh, they, they are going to get something because they have opened up with the paid variant of JDK and free source of, uh, you can say free uh, JDK as well. Okay. So these, if the Google uh, uh, is going to uh, opt for this, they may be looking for the paid version because obviously more features are there. So that's why, that's why they came up with this language. Otherwise, the syntax of Kotlin is again uh, inspired from uh, uh, Java. Everything that you can do with the Java, you can go with the Kotlin as well. But again, if you have a basic background with the Java, you know the concept of how to how to how to create uh, threads, how to create exceptions, how to create functions. What are anonymous functions? What are inner classes? Definitely, they are going to help you out. Ajit sir, I have a question. Ajit, welcome sir. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Hope to yeah. hear from you. My question is that let's suppose that we want to prepare a big project. 
Okay. And uh, we are working with uh, we are working with JavaScript uh, Ajax also. Okay, in which we are getting the information from the database without any delay. Fine. Yes. And at the same time, after working this thing, uh, we can convert it. We can get the web view of the same application in Android. Hmm. True. Is it a good practice to work in this way, or we should develop the Android app only for a big project? So what is the difference if, between yeah, if if you are going to build a, a large application see when you are going to create a web view for an application for an, a web based application there is a restriction on uh, the functionality that you are getting even i was trying to convert your uh, moodle for example apj moodle platform if you try to convert the same into this okay you are uh, losing some of the functionalities for example maybe through ajax uh, some technology may not be supported in that case so we can enable javascript and you are able to work with but again the communication is bit slower so that's why it is recommended whenever you are going to go for the big large basically enterprise level application it is recommended to build from the core ha huh, what you can do is like you can build the cross platform solutions for example you can build you can use some like react native whereby you are going to get the application ready for cross platform means ios as well as android yeah because at the at the same time actually the javascript is playing the main role na yes so if you are working say like uh, native react native or all these again, things stuff again that is the again javascript we are using uh, javascript yes that's why that's why we say if we go with the world's most popular languages javascript is still at number 1 that is javascript that is the python okay reason Thank being you. because obviously for building cross applications cross platform applications the javascript is uh, you can say the way this is javascript is now with the support for react native uh, node js it's wonderful now if i say one must learn javascript if you want to stay in the market this is very required even for a mobile application as well so first of all i want to say students uh, who have joined through me they are praising you a lot they want to have some few sessions with you i can receive the uh, messages from them on my mobile phones that they have really liked the show and they really want to have uh, some other uh, oh, pleasure, workshops like this so thank you me, very sir, much sir they want to they want to they wanted me to convey to you that they have really liked the workshop and really sir awesome thanks a lot on behalf of the faculty also i must congratulate you that it was a really good session on behalf of the students as well sir thank you sir lot thank of you. learning sir lot of clarity on android how it works and what should be done and what is our future in store for uh, the students in this thanks a lot sir yes others can put in question as well if others can put in the questions if they want please go ahead students you can write it in the chat box if you don't want to uh, switch on your video or do yeah see for example ye sab cheez abhijit okay sir before you before you wrap it up for today just one one question sir i think it, this is a question interests each and every student every engineer every computer application person that how do you see the future of mobile development say 10 years or 5 years from now sir see uh, sir I, i just want to share with you like uh, even uh, i was going through the web uh the market share i, I will share that uh, with you i uh, just a minute uh, uh, give me uh, give me a minute uh, i will just prepare uh, in exact uh, figures see uh if we go with the, the statistics okay the mobile app is projected to generate dollar 693 billion revenue either through ads or through app marketing okay and it is projected to generate 510 billion dollars in 2022 just imagine if we go with the figures we find that any company who is not going for mobile applications they are out of the market if you see if i see 100 people 
if even i see a rickshaw puller he is using the mobile it means i am seeing desktop eliminating from the market either you have a laptop if you are an it savvy or you have a mobile i have if i think of my i have a desktop which is carrying 2 gb ram i have a mobile which is of 8 gb ram just imagine on hardware platform how much we have improved upon so everybody is treating mobile as a, a you can say as a computer now so if you are targeting more audience you have to design the customized applications either in form of mobile app or in android app i had one question from a student uh, i would like to answer the same uh, for her as well so uh, here is a question from uh, a student named jaskira uh, she is interested in asking which os is better is it an ios or android if you talk about the indian community we we have the android which is ruling the market even worldwide if in the if you see have seen my presentation in the beginning i had talked about android share in the market which was approximately 72.72% which was the statistics based on may 2021 okay so earlier even if i say no doubt if, if i say the market share of android has decreased over the time for example even earlier if you go by 2021 figures it was approximately 80% plus no doubt ios is coming up as a rival now even the people in asian market have started go purchasing the android devices as well uh, sorry ios devices as well the market share of ios has gone up but still if you want to, to go for the devices android is a, a, a good uh, choice for us so we'll definitely recommend the android applications anyone else see uh, uh, there is a lot to talk about uh, and a subject like android is such a subject whereby i can speak continuously for 7 8 hours not an issue but i i have to take care of the audience as well i want where because when you are on your interest zone you can speak a lot but uh, again you have to take care of uh, the audience i i feel like when rohit sir was uh, delivering his lecture uh, even i was looking for that it's 2 o'clock it's a lunch time so i i take care of the uh, feelings of everyone uh, like to appreciate and thanks everybody for your patience and listening uh, me attentively so definitely we will be meeting in the coming uh, you can say days on uh, some different issues uh, different topics as well okay so thank you all for uh, for joining and uh, uh, participating at as well thank you very much i am going thanks to you. the session thanks to you as well the deep sir